Hello, I'm Mark Frasco, founder and president of Coact Associates. Thank you for joining me once again for session six. Today we're gonna to talk about how to build a good target list for your marketing efforts. Before we get into that, let's review brand management, our last session. Um, you may recall we talked about that the fact that your logo is not your brand. Although your logo provokes certain feelings in people, the real brand is the feeling that they have, the impression that is created um, through their interaction with you. Remember we talked about mapping those interactions, those moments of truth, to create the impression that you're looking for that is your brand in the marketplace. Um, so take special attention, and now as we build the list, we're gonna use some of those brand management techniques with some of these targets that we're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna show you a little bit how to build a good quality list. We're gonna talk about five key areas, high value targets, demographics, geographic research, research tools and methods, and then um, how you verify contact information. First of all, high value targets. Uh, what I've discovered in my career over the years is that it takes nearly as much time and effort to uh, attract and win business from uh, a small client as it does from a very large client. Um, the amount of time and effort many times it's spent um, at, at the small client would be just as useful being spent with a client that could break into your top 10. So we really work with our clients to look at who are the top 10 or 20 clients that you have today? Do they represent a good strategic cross-section that you're looking for in the future? And if they do, let's target more like those folks. Let's find some high value targets in the marketplace. The next topic um, as you begin to develop your high value target uh, philosophy is looking at some of the demographics. Where do you find these high value targets? Well, there are a number of uh, classifications that you can use. The government does help us. Um, with the NAICS code, N-A-I-C-S, North American Industry Classification System. Um, you can go on the Chamber of Commerce sites, you can go out into the Department of uh, Commerce and United States sites, and you can punch in these NAICS codes. If some of you are familiar with the old SIC code, NAICS is replacing that. These classifications are very useful in your list building. Once you've, divert, once you've determined those, those market, markets that have the greatest potential for you, each of those markets has an SIC code or a NAICS code associated to it. You can go to those sites and you can do research on that NAICS code and you can find a lot of organizations just like those that you've, uh, that you've matched as far as market potential goes. Size, look at things like revenue, number of employees, um, square foot of, of different various buildings. Many of your resource tools have this sort of information. Location, zip code, county, state, region, United States. So demographically, begin to think how you want to break down your list. Where are you actually going to target? So once again, using NAICS codes, looking at maybe size of organizations, whether it's number of employees or revenue or size of a facility or how many facilities they have, um, and also location, zip code, region, state, as I'm saying, are very useful demographically to help you narrow that list and make sure that you're getting uh, a list that is close as possible is fitting your strategic profile. Um, I like to help companies think about this a little bit, the geographic reach that they have strategically. Um, typically, uh, as you did the exercise when we were talking a little bit about your competitive advantage and your differentiation in the market, the more clearly differentiated that you are, the higher your specialization in your service or product package, the better your competitive advantage, the, the longer your reach, uh, meaning you might be able to go more regional or statewide or even nationwide if you have that sort of specialization. Um, on the other hand, if, if, you're, if you're not highly specialized, if, you're, if there is someone that does what you do in every major metropolis around the country, you might have to stay a little bit closer to home. That's not necessarily bad news. Um, many times in those markets, there's a, there's a plentiful um, uh, uh, number of high value targets in local markets. So geographic reach, the higher specialization, um, the further your reach. Um, research tools, past clients, networking, associations, the internet's great, superpages.com, LinkedIn, even sumopartner.com, you should be able to check and maybe find some uh, contacts, some high value targets. Subscription services, Harris has a subscription service, Hoover's, uh, Info USA, Dun & Bradstreet, there are a lot of subscri subscription services for list generation. And then of course there's email marketing for those people who have the email, uh, email of those high value targets, can use those to prospect names and so forth. Quality is really the key in the list. Verify your list. The best way that I know to verify the list is if you have email, use it, ask for, ask for clarification on names and titles and so forth. If you don't have that, 
you really need to pick up the phone and verify the list. You can use first class mail to check for addresses. If the mail comes back, that address is incorrect. Um, but verify that list really improves the quality. Um, I like to say too many is not enough and too little is too much. And the reason I say that is if you get too many prospects on your list, you can't give them enough attention. And the other way, if there's too little, they're really getting too much attention. You're spending too much money per contact. So make sure your list is right sized. We like to target three to 500 targets, a very manageable number of high value targets. And about the list, let it season, but don't let it spoil. In other words, um, make sure that you have enough time with each prospect in your system that you're working it, that there's a chance for them to have a positive impression about what you do, but at the same time, uh, don't go on for months and months and years and years with no contact, with nobody responding. So let your list season, let it mature, but at the same time, don't let it spoil. And organize, organize, organize. Spend a lot of time making sure that the list is clear, the quality is good, you have salutations, you have first, last names, that your addresses are correct. Make time to, make sh to audit the list and make sure that it's uh, high quality and that it's organized for use. Hope this was useful. Please join us in the next session, which will be on knowledge management.